Are you currently taking a vitamin D supplement? Are you thinking about doing so? Do you know someone who is? Or are you just really interested in nutrition? If any of those things are true, then you've come to the right place. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn, and you're watching the Daily Lipid video blog. Today I'd like to continue discussing my ongoing series over at Mother Nature Obeyed entitled An Ancestral Perspective on Vitamin D Status. In this series, I'm applying a critical eye to how we currently determine whether someone is deficient in vitamin D and what we do about it and making recommendations to improve that process. In the last post and video blog, I discussed one of the problematic ideas that I call the naked ape hypothesis that causes many researchers to recommend really high intakes of vitamin D that could be harmful to some people. But today I'd like to shift gears and be, uh, begin discussing why the basic fundamental idea of simply going into the doctor's office, having the lab test our vitamin D status, knowing from that whether we're getting enough, and then if we're not correcting the deficiency with supplements, why that even that basic simple concept is itself problematic. Now why is this? Well, it's because when we go to the doctor's office and get our vitamin D status tested, what the lab is actually testing is a compound called 25-hydroxyvitamin D or 25-OHD that our bodies make from vitamin D and that circulates in our blood. As it turns out, 25-OHD is not a specific marker of vitamin D status. Yes, it's true that if your vitamin D levels are deficient, your 25-OHD will be low. And if you correct that deficiency, your 25-OHD will go up. But that doesn't mean that everyone who goes into the doctor's office and gets a report back saying your 25-OHD level is low is deficient in vitamin D. Because there are numerous other factors, some bad and some good, that cause 25-OHD to be low. Today I'd like to discuss just one of those factors, and that's a deficiency of calcium. That's right, if you get a reading on your lab report saying your 25 OHD is low, it could actually be due to a deficiency of calcium rather than vitamin D. In order to understand why this is true, we simply need to think about what the most well-established and best understood role of vitamin D is, and that is to regulate our blood levels of calcium. When our calcium intake is too low, the calcium levels in our blood drop. As a response, our body starts using up vitamin D, using up 25-OHD in order to convert it to the most active form of vitamin D, which then restores our calcium levels to normal by doing two things. The first is to increase calcium absorption from our food, which sounds great, and the other is to take calcium out of our bones which doesn't sound so great. If our calcium intake is what's actually deficient, then the best way to correct the situation is to restore our calcium intake to normal or to the optimal level rather than to pile on more and more vitamin D just because vitamin D is being used up at a faster rate because of this other deficiency. So how do we know if our calcium intake is the problem? Well, I'll discuss how we interpret 25-OHD more and more as we go through this series. But for now, let's take a look at the most obvious way that we can determine whether our calcium intake is too low. Just look at our calcium intake. It's kind of easy, actually, because there are really only three sets of foods that are very rich in abundant levels of highly bioavailable, meaning highly absorbable calcium that's easy for us to utilize. Now this is particularly true when we're just thinking about the foods that Americans have access to. These three groups of foods are first dairy products, which almost everyone knows, and then second cruciferous vegetables, not just leafy greens in general, because spinach for example is really high in calcium, but the calcium is not very absorbable at all. But cruciferous vegetables like kale, broccoli, and their relatives do have highly absorbable and abundant levels of calcium. 
The third food group is a little bit more obscure, and that's bones. Now, bone broth, which is extremely delicious and a very good source of trace minerals and important amino acids, is actually not that rich in calcium. However, the soft edible bones of products like canned sardines or canned salmon are extremely rich in calcium. So, are you eating two to three servings per day of cruciferous vegetables, dairy products, or soft edible bones? If not, then you should think about correcting your calcium intake by increasing your intake of calcium-rich foods. If you are, then calcium deficiency probably is not something that you need to worry about. As this series goes on, I'll discuss more alternative explanations for low 25-hydroxyvitamin D besides the most common explanation that everyone knows, not enough vitamin D itself. If this topic interests you and or you're finding it very useful, I encourage you to keep up with these video blogs and with the written blog posts in my series Mother Nature Obeyed. You can find those posts simply by following the link placed in the description of this video on YouTube. Again, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn. You've been watching the Daily Lipid video blog. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you turn tune in again next time.